Okay, uh, welcome back everybody. So today we are starting the third course objective for this groundwater cycle uh, class. And this is all about Darcy's law. So this is a whole module about Darcy and his law and how we apply it and what it means for groundwater flow. Uh, the, la the next and last course objective will be about more advanced um, mathematical description of groundwater transport. Uh, so this first lecture in this module is dedicated to a bit of a historical perspective on Darcy as a person, his life and the times um, in the 19th century France. So uh, here on the left hand side you can see a picture of him actually in his later years. Um, so he was born in 1803 and died in 1858 in France. Um, the Dar Darcy's law, so first things first, Darcy's law is the fundamental equation describing the flow of fluid through porous media, including of course groundwater, which is what we're interested in. Uh, note that this is also a law that is important in the oil industry, for example, uh, you know, back at the end of the 19th century in the U United States, right? The way you would find an oil field is basically by surface expression or digging holes near you know, known um, wells uh, that already produced and then hope to get some, right? So to strike gold almost. Uh, Darcy's Law really is the first uh, time that people started to understand how underground flows worked and how we could, you know, find, for example, oil field or uh, uh, um, aquifers, you know, in a more scientific way. Okay, so just a couple of illustrations here in the middle. Um, the European Union uh, has a medal uh, after Darcy's name, so the Darcy Medal, that recognizes um, contributions to water resources. So this is the European Geophysical Union, EGU, and this is uh, the medal that they actually uh, give out. And you can see here the depiction is after that same picture. So there's very few, obviously, because he lived you know, in the first half of the 19th century, there's very few um, known portraits of Darcy, of course. Uh, and finally on the right hand side here is um, the cover of his book, uh, Les Fontaines Publiques de la Ville de Dijon. So public fountains of the town of Dijon. And again, Dijon is known for two things, right? Uh, their mustard and Darcy and their waterworks. Um, so the whole book was published in 1856, so towards the end of his life, uh, and I'll get back to that in a minute, uh, but it describes the experiments and kind of the science behind the engineering uh, that he did to uh, realize the fountains. Uh, so here's the next part of uh, excerpt of the notes that accompany this course too. Uh, so Darcy studied at the Ecole Polytechnique, and the Poly Polytechnique is sort of a, um, a, a very uh, prestigious military school, basically, right? That would be the West Point of France, but it's really an engineering school. Uh, school. So this is, you know, where future uh, officers would go to study engineering and then uh, incorporate in the core, basically, like, or the equivalent of the core here uh, in the United States. Uh, so uh, it still exists, obviously. Um, of course, given the dates, right? So Darcy was born in 1803, so starting studying in the 1820s. And so this is still fresh of the French Revolution, right? Uh, 1789 to 92 is the revolution. There's a lot of political turmoil and we'll see how that imprinted, um, you know, uh, caused Darcy to have to move and, you know, influence his life quite a bit actually. Uh, but at the uh, Ecole Polytechnique, he studied um, under people like Fourier, right, the heat law, uh, Ampere, uh, so everybody knows the amps for electricity, uh, Cauchy, so this is a very influential uh, uh, in calculus, uh, Poisson, another uh, mathematician, very well known, Poisson processes that we use in hydrology a lot, uh, Louisville, again, famous mathematician, Coriolis, so the Coriolis force, for example, uh, Navier from the Navier-Stokes equation, so all those people, you know, it's a very fertile, intellectual environment at the time um, in that school. Uh, after his time at Polytechnique, he went on to uh, Ponts et Chaussées, which literally means uh, bridges and road, right? So if you're a civil engineer, 
right? That is what civil engineers do, if you know anything. Uh, so this is the oldest civil engineering school in the world, and it was founded in 1747. So again, very famous um, uh, civil engineering school uh, where people like Prony, uh, Prony was actually the head of the school, uh, and he studied the flow resistance, and later in his life, Darcy, and I'll get back to this in a minute, actually uh, contributed to um, describing the friction factor, and that's probably because of Prony's you know, earlier law basically on friction. Uh, so a very, again, uh, very fertile, you know, intellectual environment there too, especially on the hydraulics uh, environment. So saint venin was there at that time. So the saint venin equation, the shallow flow equation, basically that heck uses, uses, for example, all the uh, surface modeling, uh, open channel modeling, you know, uses uh, these shallow water equation a lot. And that's from uh, this person. Uh, Belanger was there, so this is describing the hydraulic jump. So again, if you took some hydraulics class in undergrad or uh, fluid mechanics, you know, you've seen what a hydraulic jump is that was discovered or described at the time. Uh, Dupuis was there and Dupuis will get back to him uh, in the last module of this course, in the next module, uh, when we describe the flow in aquifers. So Dupuis was uh, very influential in describing horizontal flow in aquifers that we'll uh, see. So again, a lot of people at the time, you know, in those schools that really uh, nourished uh, 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 Darcy's thinking um, and, and becoming. So again, oh, this is a map that shows the Ecole Polytechnique down here and the uh, uh, Ponts et Chaussées, Bridges and Road. Uh, and they're both outside of Paris, you know, a little bit outside of Paris, so in the uh, region, still there uh, today. Okay, so as I said, uh, Darcy is very famous for the fountains of Dijon. So he was actually born in Dijon. So he was a local guy. Then he went to study in Paris uh, and then returned to Dijon as a lead uh, engineer, if you will, for the city uh, and tasked to provide clean water. So on the left hand side here, you can see, so this is the top one is, uh, you know, Google view, Google image of Dijon today. Uh, and you can see here a basin that little uh, statue or little cave that you can see from a uh, front view at the bottom here, the Saint-Pierre Basin Fountain. Uh, and then here at the top is actually the tower uh, above the reservoir that was built by Darcy uh, at the time. So uh, on the right hand side here, again, some text from the notes, uh, and this is uh, borrowed or adapted from uh, paper by Philip in 95, and I put the references at the end of this, uh, at, at the last slide of this lecture. You can see the references I used. Uh, but again, what's important to remember from the times, right, uh, is the situation. Like, there was no clean water, basically. Uh, water was typically derived, so in Dijon specifically, it was derived from a little stream that went by. So, you know, the water quality was poor. There was a few wells, but they were always contaminated. Uh, at the time, there was a lot of uh, public health issues, so waterborne diseases, cholera, uh, was you know common in European cities that were growing at the time, but in quite unsanitary fashion. So most cities and major big cities were you know trying to find ways basically to uh, provide clean water to their people. That was a very uh, very much a priority um, of the 19th century. Um, so Darcy's design, uh, in the end, provided eight, eight cubic meters per minute uh, of water at the spring. Uh, and then the water was carried over 13 kilometers uh, in an underground aqueduct. And actually in his nose, there's a lot of uh, work on pipes as well and lead pipes and the thickness of pipes that you need to carry the water. Again, remember the friction uh, uh, contribution that he did. So this is all linked. But again, for this class, we'll talk about his law and you know, the movement of groundwater, but he contributed to um, other problems as well, linked to the distribution of the water, basically. Uh, so again, all that 13 kilometers lead to that 6,000 cubic meters reservoir, which is, again, depicted here or under, uh, underneath the uh, plaza that you can see on that picture. Uh, and finally, 28,000 meters or so 20 kilometers of pipes would distribute that water to fountains. So there was a lot of fountains, 142, um, and counting. So 142 fountains distributed across, you know, a pretty small town, especially at the time. Uh, so, you know, water available to, for free to everybody, clean water, you know, at the public fountain. So quite a remarkable feat. 
coming from you know, an unsanitary situation to clean water for everybody uh, in a short period of time. Now, another important thing about the time uh, of Darcy's life, like I mentioned before, is the political aspect, right? So obviously I'm not asking you to remember any of the uh, history of France in the 19th century, but the point here is that the century after the revolution, there's a lot of turmoil, a lot of changes in regimes, right? So you can see here the, the end of the revolution. This is basically when uh, Darcy uh, was born and that's the start of uh, Napoleon reign. You know, 10 years after, uh, there's the, uh, some battles. And then in 1830, you know, some monarchs come back and now we have um, now we have some new uh, kings, basically, and in 1848, that's really the uh, turning point for Darcy, uh, there is a, basically, a re uh, second republic, so it's right here, the second republic starts, and then, so the, the, there's a big regime shift, if you will, from monarchs to a new uh, republic, and again, those are, you know, there's like different um, empires here, there's like some monarchs, so this is all across, you know, 50 years, so it's, it's hard to understand the political changes and turmoil at the time. So in 1848, basically, he's forced out of Dijon because he was basically a notable, um, uh, and, you know, when the New Republic starts, he's sent to, well, first to another small town and then to Paris, so he's, he's going to Paris, he's in charge of waterworks, uh, uh, sewage, especially in Paris, for a little while, and that's where he reconnected with his more of the scientists, right? So he, like I said, engineer turned scientist, right? So that 1848 turn, you know, he goes back to finishing his book. So he kind of stops being an engineer and working on on on, on practice, and really starts uh, putting together his notes, his book, and working on more fundamental scientific problems, uh, such as the friction factor, for example, uh, among others. Uh, he finally returns to Dijon. Uh, in poor health a uh, couple years before he dies, and he dies uh, fairly young of poor health. Okay, and these are the references of note here. I mean, all those are interesting for different uh, purposes, if you're interested in kind of this historical aspect of things. Uh, but of note here is that uh, top one, Alan Fries is a very famous, has a very famous groundwater book uh, that you can definitely consult for this class. Uh, very, you know, famous fundamental book. Uh, and he took some time, somewhat recently, in 94, to publish a whole piece about uh, Darcy that is uh, very eloquent and very interesting. So I encourage you to uh, check this out if you uh, would like. Uh, the Philip piece here is also uh, quite interesting because it's a very personal account of basically traveling to Dijon and going on the you know, places where Darcy was. So that's uh, another interesting writing piece. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, and in the next video, we, we'll actually describe Darcy's law and go back to the science of it. Thank you.